Hey everyone, Derpy here, back with another Battle Pirates video. This is on the Rules of Engagement update, answering the question, is PvP dead? What's happening to my base? Why is everything different? I'm going to talk about these. First of all, is PvP dead? Well, probably not, but we need a little bit more information. So, this is the biggest change that's coming to Battle Pirates for PvP that we have ever seen. Period. The only other one that gets close is the Defender Hole update when we were first able to use guards in our base defense. This is this thing has new buildings, building upgrades, a change in wind conditions, reduced repair time for the attacker and defender, conqueror holes not being able to be used in your guard, changes to how bubbles work, metal dumping and metal silos being nerfed, nerfs on your holes, buffs on your holes, nerfs on your turrets, buffs on your turrets, and to finish it all out, some free things. So let's talk about this stuff. So what is the Rules of Engagement update? The Rules of Engagement update is going to bring us some things like new buildings. The Saw Factory is not technically part of the Rules of Engagement update, but it is a big thing, big change coming out to PvP relatively soon. I assume this stands for Subaquatic Weapons or Factory or some sort, and it's going to essentially release mines in your base, similar to how the old Artemis hull worked. And the artwork, by the way, here does look amazing. If you have a different idea of what this thing could do other than release mines, you'll have to go ahead and tell me, because that's my best guess. The Rolls of Engagement update is going to change the way our buildings and our bases work. To start out with, they're giving us upgrades to various buildings right here. The upgrading turrets should increase the base power available for that specific turret, which doesn't do a whole lot without increasing the overall base power. They're also giving us upgrades to the warehouse, great hall, and radio tower, which are going to be classified as key buildings, so they're no longer knocked over by a stiff breeze. So what are key buildings? Key buildings have to do with win conditions. Now when you hit a base, you either win or you lose. There's no one star for 50%, there's no two star for 50% on the outpost, there's no three star for everything. Either you win or you lose, there's no ties. To win a battle, you have to kill all of the key buildings, which are all of the warehouses, the outpost, the great hall, and the radio tower. If you kill all of these things, you win. If you miss even one, you lose. So that's a really simple way to remember it, and it's definitely a big change in Battle Pirates, and is the, probably the biggest thing you have to take away out of this update. We also have reduced repairs, which are great. If you are a defender and your base defends, meaning they don't kill all of, these, all of those key buildings, you have free repairs on everything instantly. Now, your base only repairs up to the point it was before you got hit, so if you get flattened and 100% you kill all those key buildings, you go pop your bubble, then your base isn't going to heal to 100%, it will only heal to where you were damaged before the actual hit. And this is, I guess, a good thing for the defender. This includes guard holes. They don't take damage anymore if, the, if your base successfully defends. If you are an attacker, you now have a permanent conqueror repair queue, the one we have during Bounty, which is great. It means PV, PvP will be more accessible. More players will be getting into the game, which is a good thing. And higher level players should be able to do more PvP and have more fun during the raids, during Forsaken missions, the entire time. This is overall a really good thing. And if you want a free tip, if you have four Warhounds, you can repair two of them in your normal one and two of them in your Conqueror repair queue to have twice the repair speed, half the repair time. Okay, guard changes. These are not implemented live in the game yet, but they are coming soon. Tier 8 and Tier 9 Conquerors coming soon will no longer be allowed in your guard. This means no Howlers, no Breacher Dreadnoughts. People were very upset about this when it was first announced, so now they've rolled back on it a little bit, and Howlers will be allowed in your guard for at least maybe another couple weeks, maybe a month, but expect those to go away really, really soon. If you're a player who has an entire base that relies on three Howlers doing explosive damage, it's not going to work anymore. I only have one that I actually built within the last two weeks, so... It's not going to impact me as much as it's impacting other people. This is a really big complaint that people have about this. Okay, now here are some changes to the bubble system right now. So if someone hits you and fails in your base, they don't kill all of your key buildings, you don't get anything. If they win and they kill all of your key buildings, you get yourself a normal bubble, which will probably be 12 hours, 18 hours, 24 hours, something like that. Probably a 24-hour bubble for someone hitting you and winning. 
if someone hits you and fails and they do that three times in a row in a short time period, maybe if multiple people hit you and fail in a short time period, you get a red bubble, which will be a sh one of the ones during bounty, which is a shorter one, probably one hour, although it might be three hours or six hours. And this may change apparently based on your feedback. On That's on the forms, by the way, not on this video. Okay, those are the changes to the bubble pad and your bubble changes in general. How about metal dumping? If you buy now, and if you if you buy a 28 day bubble, your metals are now reset to 550 if you have more than 550. This was done because many high level PvP players were attacking one base, alt base, failing in it, getting that metal count up to like 800 or something stupid like that, and then having to buy a 28 day bubble and sit there until they buy another one after it comes off cooldown. This is no longer going to be possible. You can't hide metals in bases anymore. Although they did not fix the issue of you dropping to zero metals, hitting your target, and taking away 49 from them, when maybe you should only have taken away something like 13. Metal dumping metal silos are no longer quite as possible. Okay, now we get to the scary part of the video. Nerfs and buffs. You can read this statement from CM Gilly on the screen here which was people were going crazy in Discord right after this thing was released. And uh, overall, these changes have not been made just randomly. They're going to, they've been thought out, they've been tested, hopefully extensively, like it says here. So everything here has been made with a purpose and they're not just trying to screw us, screw us all out of everything every time, although it can really often seem like it. But don't make any initial judgments too harshly yet. Maybe wait till you've played around a little bit before you, you know, you, before you quit. Nerf slash buff number one, Warhound is buffed a little bit against everything and dramatically against the Gatekeeper because it now has a thermal range of 75 and its weapon is also buffed up a little bit to help the players going for a concussive build more than players going for an explosive build. Overall, Warhound is much stronger here, especially against Gatekeepers. Change number two here is the Trencher is now significantly stronger if you're going for a Cannon build and a little bit stronger just standing still in terms of your actual deflection against different turrets. And even still, it's just stronger only moving, so Trencher has been buffed up. Gatekeeper has been massively nerfed, in my opinion. This was done because it was originally released broken, and now it's been changed back uh, closer to how it should have been, apparently. The changes are on screen here. Basically, it doesn't heal buildings anywhere close as far, heals them half, at half the rate, and only can target two different things. You should still be able to read, still be able to have three gatekeepers on one portal, but it's not going to have quite the same effect. So, Gatekeepers, massive nerf against these things in my opinion, and with the Warhound buff, it does not look very good for war gatekeepers in your base guard anymore. If I spent 30 bucks on gatekeepers, I'd be pissed because they just nerfed them. But hey, maybe I'm jumping to conclusions too early and these changes are taken in a more holistic manner that makes it still possible to have three gatekeepers defend against five Warhounds. We'll have to see. Nerf slash buff number Four here is the subjugator has had its deflection decreased a little bit, combat speed is slowed down, and the aura the aura from the U1 subjugator no longer increases explosive reload as part of a nerf to the basilisks. In terms of the basilisk, it has been slowed down a little bit, that's all. Maybe to make it so you run out of time when you're using a subjugator basilisk fleet trying to go around the whole base and wipe out all the buildings. Nerf number five is the U2 Breacher has been changed so it doesn't have crazy high evade at U2. I'm not quite sure why they explained it in this complicated manner, but this is something that needed to be done to stop players from using far side from using U2 from using U2 Breachers to tank infinite far side shots. Number six here is more of a tweak. The Glacio Cannonball and the Wendigo turrets have all been changed a little bit, as well as the cryo versions of those, uh, in a way to maybe nerf them a little bit, also just remove stats that were no, long, no longer needed in the game. So they've definitely been tweaked. It might be nerfed. If you want to read the full text on this or any of these things, go to the forums and read it there and leave your feedback over there. Change number, another change here is that the dock has had its hit points increase, so you can't kill it quite as easily. I'm not quite sure why they did this, because 
if you get flattened and your your whole base gets killed, then it has to repair for two hours. If you only get killed to 50% and they don't get all your key buildings, then everything is still at full health. So I'm not sure why they changed the dock health points anyway. But I guess it's probably a good thing. The launch pad has also had the repair time dropped from like eight hours to 20 minutes. And that's, uh, that's Hefe from Battle Pirates Crib. That's his fault. So you can thank him for having your launch pad now repair significantly more quickly. Nerf number seven here is actually a, actually buff number seven here is the decimator heavy cannon the decimator cannon has had its damage increased by double and the accuracy also increased a little bit to make it perform better against some of bait holes this was maybe done in response to many community members thinking that the decimator has a firing raid bug kicks i believe it does not so there's some information for you the Farsight Heavy Cannon has also been buffed slightly with a 10% increase in accuracy, which maybe makes it a little bit better against evade stuff, but I guess they're looking at the nitty gritty details here, not just changing big things, they're looking at all possible changes across the board. Another, I am not sure if this one is a nerf or a buff, the Hellmouth Heavy Thrower now has much more splash, but has a fall off, so if you're further away from the splash damage area, you'll take less damage. This is definitely a change in the mechanic, I'm not sure if this makes them better or worse, I only have one in my base, I have two or three more, I'm not sure if I'll put them in or not. Okay, so what does all this mean, all these changes, how is this actually going to affect you? Well, number one, it means no prepping because your base will heal to full health unless you unless you lose. So no prepping, which means you don't need a bubble pad anymore, and you can remove that, put your portals, put your warehouses somewhere more useful. Your current base layouts will still work and are not broken. If you're protecting your outpost before, the outpost is a key building, so it will work. your current base layout will still work to some extent. There's much more flexibility though for interesting bases. Maybe you only protect one building and leave everything else out at the front. Only protect your radio tower. Maybe you space everything around your base. Create some kind of maze or path for people to go through. There are also two repair queues now, which is going to be good. It means PvP is more accessible to more players and you can do it more often. And it kind of just shortens the repair time of PvP conqueror holes in general. Short term, your base may have gotten massively nerfed. It may also have gotten a little bit stronger. This definitely depends, and it will balance out a little bit within a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple months. Everything should be a little bit back to normal. Okay, we just had a bunch of massive changes, and how are we supposed to make all these changes to our bases? Well, here's how. Kickside is giving out free things. Number one, they are making the level 109 Reaver Scrap Heap, which by the way, you should not auto. You need, you need to drive those ones, otherwise you might take some damage here. If you attack it, it fills your base parts to max instantly, and it also gives some three hour conqueror and defender repair tokens as drops. Okay, that's a good thing. Number two is the level 195 Drac Mine Convoy. Will now fill your titanium to max instantly, and will also drop three hour conqueror defender repair tokens. This one you can auto easily. By the way, these 3-hour Conqueror and Defender repair tokens will not overfill. I'm not sure what the limit is. I think it's 3, but that's sort of just a guess. Another free thing here is they're giving us 5 Defender Hole build tokens, which is maybe enough for a blank Defender Hole. So not great. Maybe use on some refits. Also, we have we have 2 2 days or so 4 days of build tokens for your structures, maybe your warehouses, something like that. We also have defense platform build tokens here. We have 10 of them that are three days each, so you can probably get up 10 of your defense platforms upgraded. And you also get two fully built Gorgon holes, which are not that great anymore, but maybe if your howlers are no, gonna, no longer gonna work, you get two or three howlers in, you can replace those with some Gorgons. And apparently capacity is being increased so everyone can receive all of these gifts here. So now you don't have Howlers, but you have Gorgons. I'd just like to say, you nerfing my entire base does not mean that you giving me free things cancels that out. That's not how that works right there. Hopefully these changes help make people a little bit more, more receptive, receptive to this update and withhold their final judgment. So I'm trying to tell people, don't quit the game yet. These changes are pretty massive and it is changing the way we play Battle Pirates and we'll play Battle Pirates for as long as we're playing this game here. 
don't necessarily judge something just based on what I said here. Go into the live game, experiment yourself. If you have any questions, go ahead and tell me in the comments. If you're quitting, tell me in the comments too. Go to Kickside Forums, give them constructive feedback that you have. <laughs> we know how that's gonna work. Constructive feedback that you have after you actually try this update here and try this massive PVP base changes. So this was a longer video. If you did enjoy it, if you have any questions for me, if you if you like the format, go ahead and let me know. And I will do my best to keep making Metal Pirates videos and keep helping you as long as I can and as long as people are enjoying it. So if you liked the video, enjoyed the work I put into it, leave a like. And as always, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.